Welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented to you by the Women Business Owners Alliance of Pioneer Valley. The Women's Business Owners Alliance of Pioneer Valley is made up of over 100 women business owners. And the women you will see here today are business women that are eager to share their experience with you. So please sit back, relax, and I'm here with my, I'm Susan Allen from Susan Allen Financial, and I'm here with my co-host, Ida Tassinari from Real Living Real Estate, and I'm a real estate consultant to help you through the process of buying and selling. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having us. Yes, it's yes. wonderful. And why don't you introduce yourself, Michelle, and your company? Okay. Uh, I'm Michelle Murray, and I'm a licensed mental health counselor in private practice in East Long Meadow. Okay, and Becky? And I am Becky Castro, and my business is ilovemondaymornings.com, and I'm a certified business and personal coach. Okay, and today we're talking about confidence, and I think that's something everyone wants to have. So how do you go about getting that? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> we need to know. <laughs> well, I think I would start with how people generally think about confidence and how messed up that is. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we, we believe that you have to arrive at a certain um, pinnacle of accomplishment in order to be confident. Well, I'll be confident when I get mm -hmm. my master's degree, That's or I'll true. be confident when I lose 20 pounds. And really, confidence isn't so much about that. It's about how you carry yourself. It's about being authentic, being able to feel comfortable in your own skin. And it doesn't matter what the accomplishments are, you will still exude the confidence. Mm -hmm. So Michelle, if someone comes to you and says, I don't have confidence, what would your strategies be to help them feel more confident in their job, their personal life, and their social lives? Well, I think what I would do is just get to know them, because sometimes what people need to hear is how another person sees them because it's so different from how we see ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if I get to know that authentic, genuine person, then I can reflect that back to them. It doesn't always work. Sometimes that bounces right off because they have some deep-seated um, belief about themselves that's really distorted and not, not true. And often that can come from trauma, which is a big piece of what I deal with in mm -hmm. therapy with folks to kind of unhook those experiences so they don't have to go around mm -hmm. thinking they're less than they are. And Becky, what do you think about that? As far as confidence, how do you get it and where does it come from? Yeah, it's, a, <clears throat> it's such a great question. Um, I think that we have to remember that we're always developing it in every moment. Like in this moment right now, we're developing our confidence and, and, mm -hmm. and it keeps growing on itself because we're all evolving. We don't get to be done. I used to think, oh, if I work really hard, then I'll be able to, like, stop and coast. No. Mm -hmm. We're always developing ourselves. Mm -hmm. So there's this great quote by this woman, Barbara Shear, and she says, it's only too late if you don't start now. And so what I encourage my clients mm -hmm. to do is pick that thing that they're a little bit nervous about that's a little out of their comfort zone because they know they want it, and to just take that very first step. And when you take that step, then you can acknowledge to yourself, wow, you know, I did that. And then it gives you a little feeling of like, great, I can go to the next thing. And then you keep venturing out more and more. I often use the example, Michelle and I were talking about this, um, of a toddler. When a toddler first stands up, you're like, yes. You know, you're not saying, what's your problem? You know, you're a mess. You, you can't hop. You can't skip. You don't know how to run. We're like, great. And they're holding on, you know, to the wall. Mm -hmm. And then when they let go of the wall, you're like, great, good job. Right? Some people don't get that message by a well-intentioned parent or a teacher mm. or religious person. And so that, I think, Ida speaks to what you're saying. Right, definitely. <clears throat> and, that's, mm. and that can develop into various levels of trauma, which Michelle has mm -hmm. expertise in. Mm -hmm. And others of us need a less uh, kind of digging in to find out what's, mm -hmm. what's that stumbling block. Mm -hmm. And Michelle, do you find that most people have that self-talk going on in their head and that's one of the things that I would think is the biggest thing that's holding most people back from the confidence is yeah. that negative Nancy or mm -hmm. whatever the voice you want yeah. to call in your head. Yeah, it's definitely connected, I think. You know, if, if you've gotten negative messages, and who hasn't gotten negative messages in your life, and in particular, if you got those messages in the context of some horrible trauma or ongoing trauma, then that gets embedded in your brain. And it gets stored there, and it's a very powerful voice. Um, and the person who told you all those things could be dead and gone, but you mm -hmm. still have that voice 
in your head and no amount of somebody telling you you're wonderful, you're fabulous, you're beautiful is gonna unlock that. You know, even as a therapist, if I tell someone, you know, it wasn't your fault that you were abused, it wasn't your fault, it wasn't your fault, and they say, yeah, I know what you're saying, and they get it theoretically, but on a very deep level, they don't, they don't buy it because uh -huh. the, those negative messages tend to overcome the good stuff that they get later. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just talking about it doesn't seem to make that shift. Mm -hmm. So what should they do? Well, I don't think there's one answer. Mm -hmm. um, it really depends on what's compatible with that person. Okay. Um, like I've done th talk therapy for a long, long time, and we would get just so far, and then we get to that gut feeling like, yeah, I know what you're saying, but. Mm -hmm. um, so I learned how to do EMDR therapy, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Way long title, way too much that we can talk about today, but it's not so much about talking, it's trying to unhook those messages from the brain so that mm -hmm. the part of you that knows you're good can talk to the part of your brain that doesn't think so. Mm -hmm. um, but some people do it, you know, with different kinds of expressive therapies or um, they come to that realization spiritually. It can take all kinds of roots for different people. Mm -hmm. So Becky, if you have a client that you're working with and they told you about a failure, mm -hmm. and how would you help them, a business failure, <clears throat> how would you give them the advice and, and build their confidence to overcome that failure and move forward? Mm, such a great question. Often mm. what I do is I'll have them identify a situation where they were successful to just counterbalance a little this time where they made a mistake because we mm -hmm. all go through life making mistakes and having successes. And then I tell them, I think of, um, I tell them to think of a lawyer's scale and that one side is evidence for everything that you've done right and one is evidence that for your mistakes. And I said, you need to build up the side that's the evidence that I've done things right. And when you keep focusing on that, it mm -hmm. actually chokes this out. So you just keep looking for where can I be successful. You look for where are my possibilities. You know, there's always a next step. Who can I talk to? Can I get research off the web? Can I read a book? Can I remind myself of what I've done well? You just keep focusing on that and that builds. You know, it's like love begets love. Success right. begets success. Mm -hmm. And there's this mm -hmm. other great quote. I love quotes. Um, mm -hmm. Think you can or think you can't. Either way, you're right. Mm -hmm. So right. look for the stuff where you were successful. It's mm -hmm. like the, half, the glass half full or half, or half empty. empty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one other thing I want to say that I think is really amazing about both coaching and therapy is it's really helpful to have somebody on the outside who's reminding you mm -hmm. of who you are and who you're becoming because we are always mm -hmm. evolving. We're not stagnant people. Mm -hmm. Would you call them part of their team Absolutely. to help them to develop, to have that mm -hmm. supported group Absolutely. that you need to... At, in women, it's always the girlfriend yeah. that says, yes, you're doing good, or yes, you look pretty, and that's yeah. a nice style. Yeah. And I think as women, sometimes we forget to compliment each other. Each other. And I also, um, just a tip, just when you have a very precious thing that you want to do, like you want to write a book, you want to become a speaker, you want to mm -hmm. start a business, be careful who you share it with. Because if you share it with somebody who doesn't have that feeling, they're going to shoot you down. And it mm -hmm. will, mm -hmm. it will <laughs> domino on yeah. you the side that's saying, no, I mm -hmm. I'm not capable. Mm -hmm. But if you share it with somebody who, you know, with another business um, owner, they're going to be like, great, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Now, what about shyness? <laughs> Being shy and lack of confidence, mm -hmm. are those two that really go together? Mm -hmm. I think it can, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. um, when I met my husband, I'll just tell you a little story. When I met my husband, we both worked in a psychiatric hospital, and um, he had this horrible fear of public speaking. Like he just would clam up, even in a in a room of, you know, six people. We're talking about um, treatment for one of the patients, and he would just he wouldn't say anything. And mm -hmm. He had great thoughts, um, but then somebody who I don't know who it was, but I'm ever thankful, they said, you know you know how to do this particular kind of training. You're going to do it. No, 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 I don't want to do it. They put him in that position that was way out of his comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And um, he's considered doing that for his vocation now. You wow, know. that's a big turnaround. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes they say, what do you think about this theory is that, you know, if do the thing you fear. If yes. that's what you fear, it's kind of like if you fall off the horse, get back on it and ride. Is that the <coughs> best way to go about 
conquering some of these fears and getting your confidence and overcoming shyness? What's your opinion on that? <laughs> or is it baby I have a couple steps? of quotes, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was in a restaurant recently, and on the coaster it said, um, it was a quote, what did it say? Um, even if you're scared, saddle up and do it anyway. And it was a quote mm -hmm. from John Wayne or something. Okay. It was yeah. very, I, I didn't say it correctly, but, and then I, I know this, there's this inspirational song, hopefully I'll get this right, but um, it says, fear kills more dreams than failure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you just, sometimes you just have to go. You just right. have to do it. To you know, when it. I started my practice, I had three clients. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. did it. You know, yeah, no, just have to start somewhere. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Now, when you started your business, in yeah. what year would you say you started your business? I was 27. Okay. <laughs> and we won't ask <laughs> years. That's okay. 28 years ago. Okay. <laughs> so, but personal coaching back then wasn't exactly main front as it is now. What gave you the confidence to know that there was a demand and that you mm -hmm. could provide this service to your clients? I really didn't know, and, and actually, so again, back to the lawyer scale, so before I was a business and personal coach, I owned a graphic design company, mm -hmm. and at one point in that business, I decided I wanted to design greeting cards, and my then husband said, you can't do that. He said, you'll never make any money, and I said, oh, yes, I can, <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I did, and when I got that phone call from the art director who said, I want to buy these designs, right, that was more evidence over here. And so I've built up, I built up that collection of evidence. So I'm always relying on it and trusting it. And I just knew, I was like, this is a great new profession that is gonna be, that ta it's, a, it's mm -hmm. such a, um, it's great working with Michelle because she handles people from the really extreme therapy all the way up to kind of what they consider like general anxiety. And I mm -hmm. go from there all the way up to, you know, whatever, it fully embodied, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, I just trusted. And it's, you know, it's been a long time now. <laughs> so after your clients or patients and you've coached them and you've uh, talked to them and advised them, they make that mistake and they failed. Mm -hmm. What is your best advice to tell them that yes, you've made a mistake and what is the next step to go forward? Just keep recalibrating. Mm -hmm. You know, I keep going back to the story about the toddler. So once a toddler, right, first they stand up and they're like jittery, you know, and then they let go of the wall and they're jittery. And then, you know, they take that first step. And all along the way, you're saying, yes, you can do it. You can do it. And that's what a parent needs to do. And that's, I think, what mm -hmm. we as adults need to do to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can do it. That's the, you know, the negative mm -hmm. Nancy. It's like turn it into whatever the opposite of that would be, right? Okay. So you just keep encouraging yourself to take that next step. And so the toddler, as you're recalibrating, like maybe the toddler learns, right? Well, bare feet is a lot more solid on this floor than socks without the grippy stuff on the bottom right. or boots. So you, you just, we just keep learning. I think that's our job in the world is to mm -hmm. keep right. learning. And I think the world needs us to have confidence. We have so many problems. Right. We need to have that confidence to okay. solve. I think for business, if you're starting your own business, you're going to have to develop that confidence yes. to keep it going. Yeah. But where do you think someone should start? So if you're a new business owner, mm -hmm. just to gain that confidence, where are some places you could go? Of course, you could go to Women Business Owners Alliance, yeah. right? That's, that's actually what I that's did. That's a good place yeah. to start. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I did when okay. I, the same year I opened my business because doing therapy, you're doing it in isolation. And mm -hmm. when you go to therapy school, um, you don't learn business. So I had no identity as a business owner. Mm -hmm. I, I had a pretty solid identity as a therapist. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, being in, in the company of people who encourage mm -hmm. and give you, you know, practical information. Mm -hmm. And it, then it starts to change your identity and you grow into it. Because mm -hmm. um, I also feel as business women, you have to be able to project your service, your mm -hmm. value, and what your ability is for your clients. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking to anybody that's in business to let them know mm -hmm. that you are competent. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you're not competent and there is mistakes, then do your research, as you said, mm -hmm. and fine tune those skills. Mm -hmm. I wonder if sometimes when people fail, it, maybe it's just that, that they have something that they need to learn and that's how they need to learn it. But I also wonder if it says something about that idea that they had that might not fully match their talents. Mm 
Mm -hmm. You know, so if, mm -hmm. if you can really hone in on what am I good at mm -hmm. and do that, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a better chance at success rather than trying to make yourself into something that you think you ought to be and then sell that. Right. That's never going to work. It's not no. going to be very would, natural. Yes. And it wouldn't yeah. be your true self. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Well, mm -hmm. I think part of confidence, too, and tell me if you agree with this, and starting out in business is you have to be able to really communicate with mm -hmm. other people. You have to yeah. explain to them what you do. If you, That's a very basic step. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to have that confidence to get out there, be able to explain what you offer, mm -hmm. and what ways can someone start with that besides going to WBOA? Mm -hmm. Is public speaking classes, where would you go mm -hmm. to start with, you know, getting that confidence? Mm -hmm. Anything you would suggest to your new I, business owners? I mean, public speaking is excellent. When I, I know when I first started out, I was so nervous, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I would never do anything like this. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you know, right. I, that would be way too, yeah. too much of a, of a stretch. So mm -hmm. I did Toastmasters, which okay, was that's good. fantastic, and they were supportive. And again, that kept building the confidence because you would get feedback. Mm -hmm. You did great here. You could improve here. It's like, okay, great. Now I know how to recalibrate. Mm -hmm. It's like we're always recalibrating. And that's your reference to baby steps. Take baby, baby steps. steps. Take one baby step at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you could call up and just find out, is there a Toastmasters in my area? Like that counts. Mm -hmm. I tell my clients that all the time. You don't have to go to the meeting yet. Just see, is there a meeting? <laughs> Right? right? Or do yeah. it online. You're more comfortable online? Do it online. Yeah. I think any kind of networking is really helpful. I think don't stay in isolation. Mm -hmm. Be yeah. part of a community. And As Right? As WBOA says, amazing. don't build your business alone. There you go. Yeah. Join the Women's Business Owners Alliance and yeah. find out the resources that we have to offer all of the clients. And if you're interested in coming to the meetings, you don't have to be a member. Uh, you can mm -hmm. stop by at one of our after five or our breakfast meetings as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. But supporting each other and teaching our young women on how to build confidence mm -hmm. is very important. And that they're capable. Anyone who thinks that they can start a business can because they wouldn't have that thought if it mm -hmm. wasn't possible. Right. Mm -hmm. you need to, when you hear that little inkling, you need to follow it. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> that's a truth. Yes. Go yeah. for it. And WBO is fantastic for mm -hmm. connecting women and not doing it in isolation, especially if you're an extrovert. Right. Don't exactly. go it alone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And how about for children, for kids? What, what's the best way to start helping your children to develop confidence? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't usually work with children in, in terms of a therapy setting, but um, just as a stepmom mm -hmm. um, of a child with ADHD, which was, you know, that's a real challenge to your confidence. He's always being told, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this, oh, sit right. still, you know. Yes. Stop saying that, you know, impulsive thing that you want to say. Um, and we went to a you know a workshop for parents and the thing that stuck with me is you you know find every excuse you can to tell them when they're doing something right mm -hmm. you know yeah. like typically you would leave your your bowl on the table but i noticed you put it in the sink today you know just find any opportunity to tell them when they've done something correctly or that you're proud of them mm -hmm. i personally always like the mr rogers approach what you did was wrong or not was bad, mm -hmm. but you're not bad. You right. know, mm -hmm. so the uh, right. the action was not correct. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you are still, you know, a good member of our family and mm -hmm. our society, and we'll just try harder tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, I think it circles back to, you know, um, you're loved not because of what you do, but because you are. You know who right. you are, mm -hmm. and so that kind of goes back to, you know, it's it's not so much what your accomplishments are on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's really about, you know, who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. And if you can start giving that message to your kids young, then they'll carry that with them, even though someone will tell them, many people will tell them, no, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You're not good enough Absolutely. to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and do you think women have more of an issue with confidence mm -hmm. than men, or do you think it's about equal? I, I think it depends on the on the industry, if you're talking about business, I think yeah, it I'm talking about the business. Industry. Yes, just business in general. Right. I, I think that it's changed. I mean, it's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, typically, men in business they they have these natural networking right um, okay. events, and you know they're going to go golfing, for example. But now there's mm -hmm. the Executive Women's Golf League. You know, so they do a lot of networking. So, it, it, I think you can find it. Okay, mm -hmm. but you have to challenge yourself 
to find it. Mm -hmm. You know, like we were saying, you know, mm -hmm. I may not be going to that Toastmasters meeting, but is there one? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to make that effort to, to steer yourself in places where you have opportunities to have those folks around you that are going to instill confidence and, mm -hmm. and that you give that to them. Mm -hmm. That's an important part, too. It's not all just the focus yeah. on yourself. You mm -hmm. need to help others, too, grow mm -hmm. their confidence. Yeah. Because you'll hear what you're saying, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm telling this person something that I really need to tell myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it came from somewhere. Right. So. Mm -hmm. And a big thing that I learned was I have to become a better listener. To mm -hmm. learn more things in life is that you have to stop talking and listen to what yep. the other person is saying mm -hmm. and you'll be surprised what you can learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's that opportunity for learning like in every moment. I mean you can be in the grocery store, the bank, at a networking meeting, everywhere. If you just look for it, it's right there. Mm -hmm. You're a it's great model for that. I noticed <laughs> that about you. <laughs> Very first meeting I went to, I noticed that about you. You know, like she really reaches out to new people and you can see how intently you're listening. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Makes a difference. Good skills for coaches and therapists. <laughs> That's right. You have to be a good listener. <laughs> to have, right? That's important. Yeah, don't do this listen. if you don't have that ability. So, Michelle, do you have anything else that you'd like to add? Um, I don't know. I think that it, I would second what you said about it's always evolving. You mm -hmm. know, like when, when we were talking, it's not... It's not that there's a place that you're going to arrive at, and at the same time, you already have. You know, you've arrived where you were meant to be right now. Mm -hmm. So to just kind of be patient with that process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of like happiness, right? People always say, I'll yep. be happy if I get this much money. I'll be happy if I get this job. I'll be happy if I go there and then they do that, and they're still like, oh, I'm not happy. <laughs> yeah, be grateful <laughs> right? for where, where you are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So exactly. either one of you, would you... I make a statement all the time. I choose to be happy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's easier than others, mm -hmm. but sometimes I think that <laughs> unless you're seriously clinically depressed, if you try to look at that glass half full instead of half empty and try yeah. to get your children, your family members, and your people in your business mm -hmm. to perceive their opportunities that way as well. Do you mind if I respond oh, to please, that? Oh, please, please. Yeah. I, I specialize in working with trauma survivors. So you're talking mm -hmm. with people who've had the most adversity and some of them can be tremendously resilient. And it's because they've found whatever the gift is in this experience, whether they've done that consciously or not, mm -hmm. you know, they've found what the gift is mm -hmm. and enduring it all. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have anything to add? In terms of, just in general? Just in general. I think in general, um, just a couple of points is to find a way internally to acknowledge um, anything new that you're doing that is moving you towards what you want, like regularly mm -hmm. acknowledge that about yourself. And if you don't have that skill yet, then back it up one and find someone else to see that in you and to point it out to you because that will build your confidence. And I think we, like I said before, we all want that confidence and need it because the more that we are what I call giving our gifts to the world, like that's to me what I Love Monday Mornings is. It's being who you are and loving what you do. That's going to solve the problems in our world. Mm -hmm. That's going to that's gonna bring the happiness. That's where the happiness is. Mm -hmm. it's, we don't arrive, like Michelle said, we don't arrive. It's right here in this moment. And I know that sounds woo-woo, but... <laughs> you know, but like I'm grateful that you're here interviewing us. You know, like that yeah, makes we're me grateful happy. To have you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that makes me happy. Right. Right. Well, I think sometimes too, it's almost a nice idea to keep like a little journal and yes. write down the positive yes. Yes. things. Because sometimes you can walk around. I didn't do this right. I didn't do that. I should have said this. I didn't say that. And you mm -hmm. don't think about all the things that you've accomplished to arrive where you mm -hmm. are at mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that might be a nice idea a for idea. somebody just to yep. write down what they're grateful for yep. and what's yeah. gone right instead mm -hmm. of always thinking about what's gone wrong. Yeah. Like exactly. you saying you would have never done this I how would many have years never ago? Done this. Mm -hmm. Me either. <laughs> so. I was so scared the first time I did public speaking. I was terrified. Yeah. Well, I think most people are. And again, it goes back to just putting yourself out there. You got to take the baby steps and mm -hmm. have the confidence. And oh, I did that. I did the mm -hmm. 15 second, mm -hmm. you know, um, elevator speech that yeah. we do at WBOA. And yeah. then 
go on from there. And there was a woman, you're just reminding me, that I remember uh, one of the new business owners, and she used a little index card when she did her 15 seconds. And everybody in that room supported her. There was no one saying, what's the matter with you? You can't remember it. <laughs> we all supported right. her. And that's, you know, that's a good example of how welcoming we are um, and letting her be where she was in her yeah. process. In right. her evolution. Because I always find that we're not always at the same level at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you'll see someone, you know, obviously in your practice and with your clients, they you've worked with them longer and they've developed the skills to overcome their hardships or their past. Mm -hmm. And you can see the accomplishments that they made in their own personal growth. Mm. Yeah. And we're not always, and we don't have to always be at the same success level. Right. We all need different jobs. We all need different mm -hmm. skills to be able to make the world come together. Mm. So I think that's about wrapping it up for today, unless you have any closing words for us. Thank you. This was great. Thank you. <laughs> Becky, you're all thank set. You. But yeah, thank, thank you. But thank you very much for coming. It was our pleasure. Mm -hmm. And thank you from the WBOA. And if you'd like to find out more about these women, you can go to WBOA.org and learn a little bit more. <laughs>